Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the class. So for this week, we are going to continue the theme of love in the time of warfare, and we are going to see how people react to love differently in the time of war, and how war, how that severe, brutal kind of situation influence people's idea about romantic relationships and also marriage. So for this week, we are going to read another story by the same female author Ellen Chen, the one who wrote *Last Caution*,、uh, the the story, not the movie. And the story we are going to read this week is titled *Love in a Fallen City*. So,、uh, the story we are going to read is *Love in a Fallen City*, and、uh, this is a actually a pretty popular story. And has a lot of ad- adaptations from TV shows or、uh, movies or things like that, but I、uh, still made you to read the original story because I feel like this is one of the story which will represent the style, the writing style of Ellen Chen and how she she's meticulous writing about the、um, colors or the、um, emotional expressions. Or other stuff、um, really get represented in the whole story in the writing. So I still value a lot for the language power, and that's why I made you to read the original story. And、uh, just one thing、um, to mention is that this story is very different from Last Caution, the story I made you to read、um, for last time. This story is much easier to understand and has a more complete. Plot and、uh, character development, so it's easy to get to comprehend what is going on. But the connotations and the metaphorical kind of expressions are still there. So it's a very interesting, popular reading, but still have a depth of meaning. That's what I'm going to say. Okay, so let's get on to the uh the story. So some basics about the story. So this is a picture of the female writer, the author Ellen Chen, and、uh, this story is the first collection translated into English. So that's why I was saying this story is very popular and very easy to comprehend, even in English, even in a translated second language. You still can get the gist of the story. And the story is pu- published in 1943. Also, according to Nicole Huang, a scholar,、um, she said Ellen Chen's most important literary legacy from the 1940s is her construction of an alternative narrative of war, one that contradicted the ground narratives of national salvation and revolution that dominated the wartime literary scene. This claim is pretty interesting, and I think work for both this story and Last Caution, because what Ellen Chan depicted to us, especially in this story, is a very personal and individual response to the war. But what causes a war? Why there is a war? Why two countries are fighting against each other? How can we? Kind of identify with my own country, or how can we define others as enemy? Those ground narratives, those big questions, are not included in this story, or Last Caution, or any of Ellen Chan's love stories. So it's a pretty kind of ironic thing if you're thinking about it. So even if the bomb is hitting on the ground, even if people are fighting against each other, it's pretty brutal fighting, but These characters in her story are still engaged in their own circles, are and concerning about their own life, like the love story about their families, about their、um, a husband, wife, all those very trivial kind of love romantic relationships. That's why Nicole Huang called Ellen Chan's story an alternative narrative. And、uh, I want to explain a little bit about the title. So the title, a、uh, Chinese title, is Qingchen Zhi Lian. So actually, the term Qingchen comes from one of、um, Li Yanyan's song. So Li Yanyan is a songwriter living in the、um, 100 BCE, so pretty long time ago. But this time,、uh, this term Qingchen comes from his famous song, which goes. 
There is a beauty in the northern lands, who stands alone without peer. One look from her and the city falls. Another look and the dawn crumbles an entire nation. How can I not know such evils befalling the land? Yet such a beauty shall never again appear. This is a pretty strange song, and、uh, basically establish our connection with beauty with nation in a pretty negative way. So as Li Yanyan said in the song, the beauty is、uh, that that、uh, woman, that lady is so beautiful that her look will causes a city or a nation to fall. And、uh, this kind of made the first or not the very earliest femme fatale. Narrative in the Chinese tradition. That's why later, when people talking about Qingchen, it origin、uh, it kind of nat- naturally gains two meanings. One is this lady is so beautiful; it's a、uh, out of worldly beautiful. Also, she has a kind of um connection with or some um connotations of femme fatale. And now let's go back to Ellen Chen's story. For this story, for love in a fallen city, because she uses Qingchen as a, in the title, we can interpret it it in two ways. One thing,、uh, one way is to take this Qingchen, this fall of falling city idea literal, like what translated、um, in the English title, because this whole story is about the fall of a city, Hong Kong. So there, there's a city falling, and there's some love story. So love in the fallen city that works, and also that le- leads to the connotative meaning, the metaphorical meaning of a very beautiful woman as a femme fatale who is able to cause a city or a nation to fall. So I think it's very interesting to combine these two meanings while reading this story. A little bit histor- historical background of this story. So this story depicts、um, 1930s to 1940s, the very upheaval wartime China. And at that time, Shanghai, so the city、uh, where Bai Liu Su comes from, has come under full-scale Japanese occupation. And Hong Kong, the、uh, the place where、uh, the two characters are basically、uh, dating, has lost its brief battle. And now China is faces its darkest years as a nation under siege, so that is what is happening in 1930s to 1940s. And the two characters we are going to encounter,、uh, one is Bai Liu Su, who is、uh, the female character from Shanghai, and she is a 28 years old beautiful widow, a widow, and.、Uh, um, She she is cares a lot about marriage status, and also makes a very、um, tight connection to her economic status. So in her mind, woman needs to through marriage gain the economic status they 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 they, they want. So marriage is very important to a woman. And on the other hand, the male character we are going to see is named、um, Fan Liu Yuan. Who is a thirty-two-year-old bachelor and also a dandy? So basically,、um, he has a lot of identity crisis because he is a illegitimate child of a Chinese merchant born in London, and because he cannot get his identity back to the big family easily, so he was wandering、um, outside of China for a long time, and now he returns to China. And now,、uh, began to get to the age of marriage, and looking for a, a proper woman, basically to marry. So that is、um, the two characters we are going to encounter. And one thing I found very interesting is there is actually several contrast in the whole story. So the most、um, prominent one is old versus new. Or you can say old-fashioned versus modern, or China versus West. So thinking about that, 1930s, 1940s, China is bearing all the invasions from Japan 
and all the transmission of new knowledge, new technologies, new culture from the West. So that is a very complicated and fast changing time. And at that time, still the old tradition is there, but the new culture and the Western culture um, are already um, introduced into China. They simultaneously existed and people get confusing, made their own choices all the time. Are you going to stick with the old or uh, being open with the new? So that old versus new uh, forms a very strong contrast in the whole story. As we are going to see Shanghai versus Hong Kong, even Shanghai at that time is occupied by Japanese. But the um, specific thing we see in this story still depicts Shanghai as a more, more old, more traditional places, more China, while Hong Kong is the international metropolitan. And also the Bai households versus uh, Fan Liuyuan and Bai Liu Su. The Bai households um, is formed by a Qing dynasty official. So they have that connection to tradition and they try their best somehow to cling to that tradition and lingering there. While Liu Yuan, uh, Fan Liu Yuan and Bai Liu Su, the two characters, the younger generation we are going to see, are embracing the new tradition and thinking in a pretty different way. Especially considering one detail dancing in the, um, in the story. So I, I still don't want to spoil it too much. But if you read a story, you'll see there's one thing when they're talking about dancing and the people from the Bai household said, um, our family, like our decent family, like uh, people has our, our social status, uh, don't, learn, don't learn dancing, basically. That, that is for um, those people who doesn't have a gentry kind of social status. But Liu Su, Bai Liu Su um, knows how to dance. And Fan Liuyuan knows how to dance too. And that is the very first activity brings these two characters together. And also, um, please pay attention to Fan Liuyuan's self-statement of his taste for women. He is someone lingering abroad for a long time and um, just came back to China not for a very long time. So he was looking for a traditional Chinese woman, but not in the traditional way. So that kind of very interesting, uh, you need to figure it out by yourself. But his taste for women is a combination of both old and new, old fashioned and modern as well. And also uh, if you um, making these two characters um, as a contrast, Bai Liu Su represents the old part, while Fan Liu Yuan represents the um, new part or the modern part. There's a lot of discussion of, are you doing something like is very more modern, and but I am still someone lingering in the old tradition. So that also uh, makes these two characters originally belonging to very, uh, belonging to two very different camps. But towards the end of the story, because of the war, everything changed. And that is the most dramatic moment in the whole story. And uh, besides the old and new, uh, one very distinguished contrast is individual versus community. And uh, we saw this contrast in the movie In the Mood for Love as well. So I think um, someone mentioned in the presentation, the narrow corridor, uh, kind of uh, also the walls, um, or the windows, we always we always saw someone, saw the characters through the windows, through the walls. That kind of idea of there is a community, a little, a lot of gossip floating around, but the characters themselves are individuals. They need to, uh, in order to achieve what they want, they need to fight against the whole community. That kind of idea is also very prominent in this story. So we see Bai Liu Su, if she wants to chase for what she wants, she need to fight against the Bai household. So that idea of where does the individual stand in that time, uh, how can they fight against the community will be a very interesting question to think about. 
And one more thing is the romance versus reality, or we can say love versus marriage. We seldom talking about marriage、um, in this whole class, and this is the first time I think we seriously encounter the idea of marriage and thinking about what can marriage bring to a woman and to a man, and how marriage is different from falling in love or just dating with someone. There are some very practical concerns about marriage, which is very vividly represented in the whole story. So please pay attention to that, and maybe make some comparison with past stories we read. And finally, is woman versus man. So basically, Bai Liu Su versus Fan Liu Yuan. This kind of、um, goes with all these contrasts. So woman,、um, especially Bai Liu Su, represent、um, reality. Individual, maybe how, maybe a little bit community, and also the old. While man Fan Liu Yuan is thinking in a very different way, and being、um, unrealistic, being romantic, and being、uh, the representative of modern. So that kind of gender perspective will be very helpful when we read the whole story and to understand why characters make different choices. So basically, several questions for you to think about.、Uh, where is Ellen Chan's standpoint? So after talking about all these contrasts, where do you think the author、um, stand? And I want to mention a little bit about the chilly kind of writing style of Ellen Chan, because、uh, when you read the whole story, this one and with the last caution, you will easily tell there is a cynical kind of tone. Always there in the narrative, so that is one of Ellen Chan's signature style. And、uh, please figure out why people say it's very give you a feeling of chilly, and、uh, why she、um, write things like that. Also, towards the end, do you think this story is a tragedy or a comedy? You can go both way, but、um, I think it depends on how you interpret. Um, the story and from which standpoint you interpret the story. And finally, what does the story tell us about Chinese way of understanding love and marriage? As I said, at that specific time, nineteen thirties, nineteen forties, when China is go through a lot of upheavals, when the society is not stable, people are one foot in the traditional part. While another footstep already on in the modern part, so how do people reconcile all these ruptures, and、uh, how does that influence Chinese people's way of understanding love and marriage? That will be the main task of reading the story. And finally, I want to introduce one of the、um, famous passage and one of my personal favorite passage from this、um, story. That is,、uh, when the first time Fan Liu Yuan took Bai Liu Su out on their way back home, they encounter a wall, and Fan Liu Yuan said something like that. I don't know why," said Liu Yuan, looking at her Bai Liu Su. But this wall makes me think of the old saying about the end of the world. Someday, when human civilization has been completely destroyed, when everything is burned, burst, utterly collapsed, and ruined. Maybe this wall will still be there, a、uh, here. If at that time we can meet at this wall, then maybe Liu Su, you will be honestly care about me, and I will honestly care about you. So this、uh, very short piece of、uh, writing actually indicates a lot of the key elements throughout the whole story, like the idea of the end of the wall, a、uh, end of the world. What does that mean, and why、um, the the wall will still be there, and why、um, only at that moment maybe they will honestly care about each other? So please figure out why by reading the story, and let's have a very interesting discussion on Thursday. That's about it. I really hope you enjoy this week's story. Don't forget to leave a comment down below. You can also make some comparison between this story with Last Caution, 
and uh, I will see you on Thursday for a class discussion. Okay, so yeah, bye.